Welcome to module 2 of measurements and instrumentation. Here we will see measurement of power, measurement of energy, current transformers and potential transformers, extension of range using instrument transformers, Hall effect multipliers, etc. First we will see power measurement or electrodynamometer type instrument and its, its principle, the principle of electrodynamometer type instrument. So, when any current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force and due to this mechanical force, deflection of conductor takes place. So, we know that the magnetic effect produces a force and this mechanical force uh, causes the deflection of conductor and that is used to indicate the power. To the construction and working of dynamometer type wattmeter, uh, the construction is there is two there are two fixed coils uh, and there is a moving coil that is free to move inside this inside the space provided by these two fixed coils these two fixed coils are bounded by thick wires and the moving coil is bounded by thin wires the uh, the, the fixed coil uh, the uh, the flux produced by the fixed uh, fixed coils is proportional to the current through the load and the flux produced by the moving coil is proportional to the voltage through the load so, the, the interaction of fluxes uh, from the fixed coils and the moving coil uh, causes, uh, causes the reading uh, and the reading is in watts. Apo, uh, fixed coil, fixed coils in the moving coil in the uh, interaction of fluxes uh, that causes the reading uh, which causes the reading and the reading is taken in watts. What, are, what is the fixed coil or current coil? The fixed coil is divided into two equal parts and these are connected in series with the load. Uh, the main magnetic field is produced by these coils and uh, these are divided in two sections so as to provide more uniform magnetic field near the center and to allow placement of the instrument moving shaft. Now, this fixed coil uh, are usually wound with thick wires for carrying the main load current through them. The load current will flow through these coils and uh, the, the supports are made of ceramic so as not to disturb the magnetic field distribution. So the fixed coils have uh, thick, are made of thick wires and they carry the main load current. That is why it is also called current coil. And they have uh, the they produce the main magnetic field which causes the uh, which which results the measurement. Now let us see what is moving coil. Moving coil moves the pointer with the help of spring control instrument. A high value non inductive resistance is connected in series with the voltage coil. So uh, the moving coil is made of fine wires and they are wound either as a self sustaining air cord or coil or on a non metallic former. It is mounted on a pivoted spindle and can move freely. Now uh, the moving coil is what? moves they, 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 that moves the pointer with the help of spring control instrument now the fixed coil uh, is the one that uh, produces the magnetic field these coils produces the magnetic field but the moving coil is the one that moves and these are also called pressure coil uh, and we can also say a non inductive resistance is connected in series why to restrict the current through it to a small value to ensure that the voltage coil current remains in phase with the load voltage now we have a load and uh, the, this load has a load voltage so uh, we have to ensure that the voltage through the uh, uh, we have to ensure that the voltage coil current is remains in phase with the load voltage that means we should be in phase with i now these are made of fine wires uh, and the current coils are made of thick wires now we will see what a movement and restoring system. The moving coil along with the pointer is mounted on an aluminium spindle in case jewel bearings are used to support the spindle. There, is, there are these brown uh, bro phosphor brown springs They are used to lead current into and out of the moving coil. They provide restoring torque. The current value in the moving coil is to be limited to values that can be safely carried by the springs. 
So there are these phosphor bronze springs which provide the restoring torque and they are used to lead current into and out of the moving coil. Now uh, let us see damping system. Small aluminium veins attached at the bottom of the spindles uh, are the uh, damping system. These veins are made to move inside closed enclosed air chambers, thereby creating the damping torque. Eddy current can, can, can damping cannot be used because metal element to be used for eddy current damping will interfere and distort the otherwise weak operating magnetic field. Now eddy current needs uh, eddy current works on the principles of principle of magnetic field, uh, whirlpools of current caused by magnetic field. So the eddy current damping will interfere and distort the weak operating magnetic field of the, which is the main principle of this instrument of the dynamic dynamometer type watt meter. And here we use pneumatic type uh, damping system. Let us come to this is the dynamometer type watt meter, and uh, here we can see there are uh, some terminals, and these terminals uh, are M and L are the terminals of current coil, and C and V are the terminals of pressure coil. And we can uh, connect the uh, connect this watt meter in a circuit uh, to uh, measure the power of the load to the torque equation so deflecting torque td is proportional to ic ip and what are ic ip ic is the current through current coil and ip is the uh, current through pressure coil uh, here ip is very small and controlling torque tc equal to kc theta the the this theta is the uh, restoring uh, the restoring angle of the uh, phosphor bronze fiber now in steady steady deflection position tc equal to td that means theta proportional to i square so this will give a non linear scale because we have the relation theta proportional to i square now let us see the total energy stored in the magnetic field of fixed coil e equal to uh, half ic square lc plus half ip square lp plus ic ipm this is the inductance of the LC is the inductance of the uh, current coil. LP is the inductance of uh, pressure coil, and this is because of the interaction between uh, the two coils. Uh, this is the uh, mutual inductance equation or the total energy equation. This is the mutual in M is the mutual inductance between the current coil and pressure coil. Now, deflecting torque TD equal to dT by d theta. So uh, de by d theta or uh, equal to half ic square dl c by d theta plus half ip square dlp d theta plus ic ip dm by d theta so we get the deflecting torque as i square dm by d theta now at steady condition at tc equal to td or theta equal to i square dm by i square by kc dm by d theta so here also we will get the equation theta proportional to i square now we will see power measurement. Let us consider IC. IC is IC sine omega t and alternating current, and IP equal to IP sine omega t minus phi. Now TD equal to one by two pi integral two uh, integral zero to two pi IC IP dm by theta d omega t. And when we integrate this, this IC IP uh, dm by d theta is the uh, the IC IP dm by d theta is the deflecting torque equation and 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi uh, IC uh, integral 0 to 2 pi IC IP sin omega t into sin omega t minus phi d omega t into dm by d theta and when we integrate this we will get td equal to IC IP cos phi dm by d phi uh, so we will get IP is through PC corresponds to through the pressure coil and uh, IC is the current through uh, current coil. Uh, so we will get TD equal to uh, V uh, TD equal TD proportional to VI cos phi. TD proportional to VI cos phi. Now uh, as a meter and voltmeter. Uh, as a meter, we will uh, current coil and pressure coil uh, are 
there is no resistance and they are connected in parallel and uh, as voltmeter uh, current coil and pressure coil as it is now let us come to power measurement in three phase ac circuits first let us see blondel's theorem it says when power is supplied by the k wire ac system the number of watt meters required to measure power is one less than the number of wire that is k minus one regardless the load is balanced or unbalanced so this theorem says that when power is supplied uh, by uh, the k by a k wire ac system let us say uh, k is three or three wire ac system or our sequence is r y b then the number of watt meters required to measure power is uh, two so we have to we have we need to have two watt meters to uh, measure the power in this r y b phase sequence so there is two watt meter method three watt meter method and single watt meter method now let us see two watt meter method balanced load condition so this is our ryb phase sequence and these are our uh, these are our loads uh, z z z uh, this is a, a star connection and these are our watt meters w1 and w2 this this indicates the uh, uh, fixed coil or current coil and this indicates the pressure coil uh, so we have w1 w2 and ib is the current through b phase y is the current through y phase and uh, uh, ir is the current through uh, uh, r phase and vrn vyn vbn are the uh, voltages in the uh, in the three phases now let us see the phaser diagram so uh, this is our ir current through r phase and uh, uh, this is our vrn that is the our uh, phase voltage uh, there is then uh, we know that this uh, voltage is leading voltage is leading or current is lagging because it is inductive load then we have ib and vbn iy and vyn and uh, we ha here we have vrn and vbn so uh, according to the triangular law of addition we will get vrb and vyb that are the line voltages uh, between r and b and y and b now we can we will see now we will see uh, the power measured by the watt meter w1 is uh, W1 equal to VRP IR into cos 30 degree minus 5. That is the angle between IR and VRP. This angle is cos 30 minus 5. Uh, and the, uh, because uh, why W1 is VRB? Because we are connecting our watt meter between R and B phase. Now the uh, power measured by the watt meter W2 is W2 equal to VYB IY cos 30 degree plus 5. That means uh, the uh, angle between vyb and iy this will be our uh, uh, angle 30 degree and this will be our angle 5 so we'll get cos 30 degree plus 5 now since the load is in balanced condition we will take ir equal to iy equal to ib equal to il which is the line uh, current and uh, vry equal to vyb equal to vbr equal to vl which is the line voltage so we will get w1 equal to vl il cos 30 minus 5 and w2 equal to vl il cos 30 degree plus 5 so uh, according to blondel's theorem uh, we said that the power in this ryb phase is the sum of the uh, readings of watt meter so uh, we will add w1 plus w2 uh, the, which will result in vl il cos 30 minus 5 plus vl il cos 30 degree plus 5 uh, and we have to expand it and we will get w1 plus w2 equal to root 3 vl il cos 5 that means our power is root 3 vl il cos 5 that is our power or w1 plus w2 the sum of the readings of the two watt meter is equal to the power absorbed in a three phase balance load which is root 3 vl il cos 5 now we have to uh, determine the power factor which is phi uh, so we know w1 plus w2 equal to root 3 vlil cos phi and now we will take w1 minus w2 uh, with where uh, we will get vlil sin phi 
so uh, we will divide these two equations and we will get tan phi equal to root 3 into w1 minus w2 by w1 plus w2 or power factor cos phi equal to cos tan inverse root 3 into w1 minus w2 by w1 plus w2 now this is our reactive power and this is our active power now we will see the relationship between power factor and watt meter readings so uh, let us say a power factor is unity or phi equal to zero degree then w1 will be positive and w2 will be positive we, we will just uh, put uh, in this equation zero what are end zero we will get vlil cos 30 and vlil cos 30 and they are both positive and they are equal also now uh, let us say the power factor is between 0.5 and 1 uh, what do you mean by power factor cos phi so uh, cos inverse 0 0.5 will be 60 degree and 0 degree uh, so our phase angle between 60 degree and 0 degree then uh, let us uh, substitute in this equation 60 degree and uh, 0 degree we will get positive positive but w1 will be greater than w2 now let us uh, consider power factor equal to 0 0.5 or phi equal to 60 degree and we will get w1 equal to positive 0 uh, so uh, this is the variation of two watt meter readings with change in power factor and when we plot the graph this is our graph w1 will be uh, first uh, increasing w1 will be increasing as we come, come from minus 90 to 90 uh, or uh, there is uh, there is load and the w2 will increase from uh, 90 degree to minus 90 degree that means when there is a when there is a lag circuit now uh, we will determine reactive power q uh, that is root 3 VL IL sin phi or Q equal to root 3 into W1 minus W2. We saw earlier W1 minus W2 is VL IL sin phi. Now we will see 3 watt meter method, 3 phi is 4 wire. Now what is the fourth wire? Fourth wire is the neutral wire. We will see 4 wire. So according to Blondel's theorem, we should have 3 watt meters W1, W2, W3. Here W1 is connected between R and N and W2 is connected between Y and N and w3 is connected between b and n so according to blondel's theorem the uh, power uh, of this r uh, r y b n equal to the sum of the watt meter readings w1 plus w2 plus w3 now let us see uh, one watt meter method three phase four wire the, there is only one watt meter uh, then watt meter reading will be equal to vr ir cos phi v phi i phi cos phi and active power equal to uh, 3 into w uh, we will take between r and n the power and we will multiply it with 3 this uh, and this is the uh, phasor diagram we have vr vy vb and ir is lagging behind vr or voltage is leading Now we will uh, see the determination of reactive power by one watt meter method. So this is our RYB and this is our load and we have connected our uh, watt meter between uh, R and B. So uh, W equal to VRB IY cos 90 plus phi or VLIL sin phi or reactive power Q equal to root 3 into what uh, the uh, our uh, root 3 into w or root 3 into power uh, measurement from this watt meter and this is our phase diagram this is vr vb and vy uh, uh, rby uh, ryb phase sequence and this is our v, uh, vrb which we uh, get from uh, the um, triangular law of addition and this will be our iy which is uh, lagging behind voltage because it is an inductive load now this is the uh, phasor diagram for a uh, three phase four wire we have vrn uh, v uh, yn and vbn uh, then we have uh, ir iy and ib 
and uh, we can uh, determine line voltages VRB and VYB uh, from the triangular law of addition. And here we can see the uh, angle between IY and VYN is 5 and IY and VYB is 30 plus 5. Uh, IB and VBN is 5. Uh, and the angle between IR and VRN will be 30 minus 5. Now let us see low power factor meter. Low power factor meter are the instruments that measures lower values of power factor accurately. The needs for low power factor meters is the value of reflecting torque is very low even though we fully excite the current and pressure coils and there will be errors due to pressure coil inductance. So we have to use a special type of meter uh, called low power factor meter for measuring uh, lower values of power factor. Now we will see errors in electrodynamometer. Electrodynamometer watt meter. We have pressure coil inductance. The pressure coil of the electrodynamometer has some inductance because of the inductance. The current of the pressure coils lags behind the voltage. Thus the uh, power factor of the watt meter becomes lagging and uh, the meter reads high reading. So there will be inductance, uh, there will be pressure coil inductance and the current lags behind voltage. So uh, the power factor becomes lagging and the meter shows greater reading. And we will uh, th then we have pressure coil capacitances. Uh, this capacitances increases the power factor uh, and we have error due to mutual inductance effect. The mutual inductance between the pressure and current coil produces errors. Then we have eddy current error. Eddy current induces, uh, eddy currents uh, are induced uh, creating its own magnetic field. This field will disturb our uh, flux, uh, will disturb the fluxes produced by a fixed coil and current coil. Uh, then we have stray magnetic field which disturbs the main magnetic field of the electrodynamic watt meter affecting the reading. Then we have temperature error as uh, there is variation of temperature will change the resistance of the pressure coil. The movement of the spring which provides the control and torque also get affected of the temperature change thereby there will be error. So these are the errors. Now let us see. Uh, this is the uh, now let us see error due to pressure coil inductance. So this is our V load, which is equal to V phase, and this is our IP, which is lagging behind the uh, VL because of a pressure coil inductance, and this is IL, which is the uh, current uh, through the load, which is lagging. Uh, actually, our uh, VL and IP should be in phase, but uh, due to low, uh, due to uh, pressure coil inductance, IP will be lagging. So uh, errors due to pressure coil connection. If you connect pressure coil uh, at this terminal, then there will be uh, uh, I plus IP would be our supply voltage. There will be current loss. Then we will see features incorporated in watt meter for low power factor measurement. So this is our current. I, uh, so this is uh, the sub uh, I plus IP current just going through current coil and pressure coil. So we will connect a capacitor uh, in parallel with the series resistance. Uh, uh, and uh, we will also connect a compensating coil. If power factor is low, uh, the value of I is large, then we have larger error. Thus, in order to avoid the situation, we have, connect, we have connected the variable series resistance with a capacitor. The final modified circuit so obtained is called a lower power factor meter. So that uh, uh, connecting a capacitor will, uh, uh, will, will uh, reduce our errors due to pressure coil inductance and we will get uh, the correct reading. When phi, when uh, power factor is low, phi is large and we have large error. But uh, when we connect a, a capacitor, um, then it is called the low power factor meter. It's designed, uh, a modern low power factor meter is designed such that it gives high accuracy while measuring power factors even lower than 0.1. 
so uh, connecting a capacitor will um, result in my, uh, lower power factor meters which will uh, give high accuracy while measuring power factors even lower than 0.1 now let us see induction type single phase energy meter which is used to uh, measurement of energy which is used to measure energy now induction type instruments are used for ac measurements and they are used to measure the energy consumed in any ac circuits in a prescribed period where supply voltage and frequency are constant uh, it is an integrating instrument that means uh, which measures the total quantity of electrical energy supplied to the circuit in given period in kilowatt hour this is our unit of energy then there is meter constant which is the number of revolutions made by the disc to indicate 1 kilowatt hour energy consumption so this is our energy meter and idu vannittu oru integrating instrument aanu that means adu ingane ella reading ne ingane integrate cheythu will give the final value after a period of time so uh, let us see the principle of single phase energy meter now the basic principle is electromagnetic induction there is a metallic disks and the metallic when the metallic disk cuts the magnetic field produced by coils carrying alternating current and emf is induced in it so when uh, the, uh, we have a disk and our disk has a uh, constant k okay, which is the uh, number of revolutions made by it to uh, in uh, to uh, indicate 1 kilowatt hour and uh, we have our uh, ac current which is uh, which is given through uh, to uh, coils which is given through and uh, this metallic disc cuts the magnetic field produced by the coil and an emf is induced in it now the emf induced in the metallic disc causes eddy current to circulate in it so by interaction of rotating magnetic field and eddy current torque is developed and the disc rotates and when the disc rotates uh, energy is uh, recorded over a period of time now this is our uh, construction of single phase energy meter we have a driving system a moving system a braking system and a registering system so this is our disk uh, and the disk is uh, placed between uh, in between a braking magnet and we have our pressure coil uh, which is an m type pressure coil see the shape is in a m type and we have current coil uh, which is in a u type uh, is our pressure coil and this is our current coil and the current coil has less turn and the pressure coil has a greater turn uh, and we have a shunt magnet connected uh, so the disc rotates because of the uh, mm, we here we are supplying our ac supply through this current coil and pressure coil and uh, due to that an emf is induced and the disc rotates and the disc rotates at, uh, and the this rotation of disc uh, will be recorded to a recording mechanism this is our load Uh, so we will get to the energy of the load so these are the systems the driving system moving system braking system and the registering system our driving system consists of a series magnet consists of a number of u shaped laminations of silicon steel together to form a core a coil of thick wire having a few turns is founded in uh, both legs of u shaped magnet now our current coil is connected in series with the load and our pressure coil is connected in parallel with the load and this produces the magnetic field proportional and in phase with the uh, line current I, so namukku ingane kore u shaped laminations of silicon steel und and in between there is uh, the voltage coil these are the current coils and voltage coil between these driving system which are these uh, u shaped laminations of silicon steel uh, and there are eddy currents produced in this uh, silicon steel uh, now this is our uh, disk and the disk is connected to gear train this gear train is connected to the dial uh, or we can say this is our registering system and this is our braking system uh, magnetic braking system now this produces magnetic field proportional and in line, uh, phase with the line current i so this is the series magnet and we have a copper ring we have a shunt magnet connected parallel uh, 
this is our um, aluminium disc between breaking magnet now let us see shunt magnet it consists of number of m shaped lamination so of silicon steel uh, assembled together to form a core a coil of thin wire is uh, having large number of turn inbound on central limb of the magnet voltage coil is connected across the load it is excited by current proportional to the supply voltage and uh, is known as potential coil voltage coil is arranged to be as highly inductive as possible um, causes the current and therefore the flux to lag the supply voltage by nearly 90 degree that is why the voltage coil is arranged to be as highly inductive to lag the supply voltage by nearly 90 degree and there is an adjustable copper shading rings that are provided on the central limb to make the phase angle displacement between magnetic field set up by shunt magnet and supply voltage is approximately 90 degree to approximately 90 degree we have a copper ring now let us see the moving system it consists of light aluminium disc mounted on a vertical shaft the disc is placed in the air gap of two electromagnets and now the time varying fluxes produced by shunt and series magnet induces eddy currents in the aluminium disc and the interaction between these two magnetic fields and uh, uh, eddy this shunt and series magnet is our m and u type uh, laminate sheets and the interaction between two magnetic fields and eddy currents set up a driving torque in the disc the number of rotations of the disc is proportional to the energy consumed by the load in a certain time interval and is commonly measured in kilowatt hours of time so this is the sum of the number m type m uh, type uh, coils and u type coils which are our shunt and series magnet and there are eddy currents produced in it and the interaction between these two magnetic fields and eddy currents set up a driving torque in the uh, disc and when the disc rotates an emf is produced uh, and uh, the number of rotations of disc is proportional to the energy consumed uh, and this is made up of light aluminium disc and this is mounted on the vertical shaft and the shaft contains uh, our registering system and now we will come to braking system the damping of the disc is provided by a small permanent magnet we uh, we have our control torque and deflecting torque deflecting torque is produced in the aluminium disc now we have to have a uh, damping torque which is provided by the braking magnet a uh, damping of the disc is pro pro provided by a small permanent magnet located diametrically opposite to the ac magnets the movement of rotating disc through magnetic field cause crossing the air gap sets up eddy currents in the disc that reacts with the magnetic field and exits a breaking torque that will put our uh, disc to stop rotating by changing the position of the brake magnet or di diverting some of the flux there form the speed of the rotating disc can be controlled by changing the position of our brake magnet and why this disc uh, we have our eddy current damping system the interaction between our shunt magnet and series magnet will uh, causes the disc to move and then we have registering mechanisms to record the number of rotations of aluminium disc and uh, we saw that our uh, disc is connected to a vertical shaft and this shaft is connected to some of a series of gears and these gears will uh, move according to this uh, movement of vertical shaft and we will have uh, our reading like this so this is the gear mechanism this is also a gear mechanism and this is uh, the digital energy type meter now to uh, this is to record the number of rotations of the aluminium disc their rotation is directly proportional to the energy consumed by the load it consists of gear train which turns pointers that indicates on dials the number of times the disc has turned now uh, our basic principle is that the number of revolutions of the disc is proportional to the energy consumed by the load so what does our registry mechanism show it shows the revolutions made by the disc and the energy meter does determines and adds together or integrates all the instantaneous power values so that total energy over uh, our used used over a period is thus known this is our practical diagram here we have our uh, shunt magnet this is our series magnet u type shunt magnet m type we have aluminium disc between breaking magnet 
load current I L is uh, this load current is in phase and here the voltage is in phase current proportional to load voltage I shunt and we have copper bands and we have pressure coil we have the current coil in the series magnet and pressure coil in the shunt magnet now the mechanism there is a voltage coil so the current coil stator aluminium rotor disc uh, rotor brake magnets spindle with the worm gear uh, display dials this is our voltage coil and uh, uh, our m type voltage coil this is our uh, current coil u type current coil here that is inside we cannot see and the, this is stator which uh, holds all these things and we have our aluminium rotor disc that is the four and five is our rotate rotor brake magnets and this is our spindle which is connected to some gears and uh, this is our display dials now let us come to the theory of operation so uh, this is our supply voltage and this is our load we have to uh, determine energy consumed by the load now this is our phi shunt which is the magnetic flux produced by the shunt this is our phi sc uh, that is the magnetic flux produced by uh, series magnet now this is uh, our phi shunt is uh, lagging from our E shunt by 90 degree. This is our voltage and this is our I shunt. Uh, here we can see the phi shunt lags behind supply voltage by 90 degree. Uh, and the E shunt induced in the aluminium disc uh, lags phi shunt by 90 degree. Uh, and our E shunt produces an eddy current I shunt. Which is in phase with it. E shunt is the uh, um, voltage produced by the shunt magnet, and our uh, phi shunt, which is the magnetic flux produced by the shunt magnet, is uh, 90 degree leading, and our voltage. Uh, supply voltage, uh, phi shunt lags behind supply voltage by 90 degree that is made possible by our copper shading ring now we have our uh, i and uh, now we have our uh, phi sc which is the magnetic flux of series magnet which lacks uh, the supply current i lacks uh, the supply voltage v by an angle theta so this will be our power factor angle uh, the i lags behind v uh, let us consider uh, we are considering all circuits to be inductive so the current i through the series magnet produces phi sc which is in phase with it now phi sc induces an em of esc in the disc uh, in 90 degree lag with it esc produces isc in uh, isc in phase with it now the two for torques are produced by first flux phi shunt interacting with the eddy currents uh, uh, ISC uh, generated by the second flux phi S. So, what we have here, we have the first flux phi shunt, which is interacting with the AD currents ISC that is produced by the second flux phi S. Uh, produced by our second flux uh, uh, of the series, the series magnet produces an AD current ISC. Uh, so that we uh, and or uh, flux of the shunt magnet uh, interacts with the eddy current. Now the second flux phi sc interacting with the eddy current, or vice versa. So for second flux phi sc interacting with ish induced by the and this ish is induced by the uh, first flux phi sh. So we have torque one equal to k into ish into phi sh cos theta and a t2 equal to k into ish into phi sc cos 180 degree minus theta now the expression of resultant torque will be t1 minus t2 uh, we will get k vi cos phi k1 plus k2 or we can get td proportional to vi cos theta 
now uh, we'll see opposing or break torque tb the speed of the aluminum disc is proportional to the rate of cutting of breaking magnetic flux by the disc that is our aluminum disc thiriyanayin anusarichu our rate of cutting will also increase or decrease it is directly proportional now the torque produced by the breaking magnet on the aluminum disc is directly proportional to the speed of the disc so uh, breaking torque tb proportional to n where n is the speed of the disc in rpm at steady rotational condition when the speed becomes steady td equal to tb or vi cos theta proportional to n or we can integrate and we will get vi cos theta dt integral 0 to t proportional to 0 to t n dt that is how we get our energy this is our energy uh, energy consumed is proportional to number of re revolutions how what is n uh, n is the speed of the disk uh, in rpm uh, that is revolutions per minute so when we integrate it we will get the revolutions number of revolutions so energy consumed will be proportional to number of revolutions here we will uh, see the average generator torque td is proportional to vi cos phi and the brake torque tv proportional to n they are opposing each other at steady condition td equal to tv we get energy consumed is proportional to the number of revolutions now we will see two element three phase energy meter it is used for measuring the energy in three phase three wire system it has two disks mounted on the common spindle each unit is provided with its own breaking magnet copper ring shading band and the compensator for getting the correct reading and the moving system drives a single gear train this is our two phase three element uh, which is used to uh, record energy in an rvb phase we have current coil uh, and we have pressure coil uh, now uh, we saw that uh, this you it has two disks mounted in the common spindle each unit is provided with its own breaking magnet uh, the moving uh, moving system drives a single gear train so this is the construction we have a disk we have two disks and they are uh, they have individual braking systems uh, so this will be our outline uh, we have common shaft this is our common shaft this axis is our common shaft and that uh, connects to the gear trains uh, and uh, we are connecting uh, current coils between by uh, our uh, we will connect accordingly to get the energy consumed in an rvb phase now the working is the driving torque of both the elements has to be equal for same power passing through it the torque is adjusted by connecting the current coils of both the elements in series and their potential coils in parallel uh, uh the balance torque is obtained before testing the meter the position of the compensator and the braking magnet are separately adjusted to each of the element for obtaining the balance torque so uh, we have the driving torque of both the elements has to be equal for same power passing through it that means we have two disks and the driving torque of both uh, the uh, disk should be equal the torque is adjusted by connecting the current coils of both the elements in series and there so here we have the two current coils in series with the faces and a pressure coil in parallel with the in pressure coil in parallel uh, in this diagram it is clear this is our um, pressure coil curve this is our first uh, a and this is our b here we can see the current coil are um connected in series the pressure coil is connected across the supply and the load now the disadvantages are it is, it is subjected to errors and large frictional error due to greater weight of the moving parts the advantages are the it is cheaper than having three single phase energy meters three single phase meters it takes the total power on a single res uh, register in case of inductive loads power reversal happens for power factor below 0.5 lag but net torque is in forward direction now let us see uh, some ex um, some um, metering systems we have time of day metering which is invo which involves dividing the day into tariff slots with higher rates at peak load periods and low tariff rates at off 
peak load periods. This is an important demand side management measure. It incentivizes consumers to shift a portion of their peaks from a portion of their loads from peak times to off peak times. It improves the system load factor by reducing the demand on the system by during on the system during peak period. So we have the time of day meter. And then the chain and watcha, it will divide the day into tariff slots. And one a slot will have higher rates at peak load periods. And there are low tariff rates at off peak load periods. So uh, this will incentivize the consumers to shift a portion of their loads from peak times to off peak times. Uh, and as a result, uh, in the peak time, uh, the system load power factor. Uh, is improved because in, a, in uh, because this incentivizes consumers uh, to shift so there will be less load now this is our uh, an example in kerala uh, in off peak there is 80 percentage but in peak period there will be 140 percentage tariff slots this is another now the uh, advantage and this will result in this time of day metering will result in changing the consumer behavior and it eases the strain of energy usage required at its most in demand time and it helps consumers to cut energy costs the time of the tariffs and price signals to consumers that reflect the underlying cost of energy production consumers apply load shedding by running machines at off peak hours whenever possible Now, importance of TOD it is an effective way for utilities provider to manage their power production or record energy consumption. It allows consumers to take control of their energy bills. We, the, they can uh, use dynamic pricing programs or load curtailment programs. It helps in developing uh, pricing mechanism for setting up of generation plans which could meet the system peaking power requirements. Now we have a smart energy meter. Smart meter is an electronic device that records consumption of electrical energy in intervals of an hour or less and communicates that information at least daily back to utility for monitoring and building. They enable two-way communication between the meter and the central system and they provide site-specific information allowing utilities to introduce different prices for consumption based on usage during the time of day and according to the season. Now, this is an efficient method for obtaining usage data and it eliminates physical meter reading and there is an accurate meter reading and it improves building. Now, this is our smart uh, meter. We can know our RMS, current RMS, voltage, phase angle, power factor, instantaneous active power, instantaneous reactive power, energy consumption. Uh, so, that is uh, this all all these things are measured in a smart meter and uh, these measurements are uh, sent daily. So it will uh, reduce the physical error measurement, physical measurement error. So this is how communicate. Smart meters measure how much gas and electricity you use. And they send this data wirelessly to your home display. They also transmit this data to their, to the data and communications company. It sends this to your energy company and your energy network. Energy networks which manage the wires and pipes to distribute uses the data. And your energy com to company shows how you are using energy in your online app or account. This is the block diagram uh, we have this this is our face this is neutral we have voltage sensing current sensing uh, to an energy metering ic we have a controlling unit uh, just connected to bat uh, a battery is connected and the power supply battery charger uh, starts the battery and we have in this control circuit uh, is the main uh, controlling unit they, which have the reset circuit lcd control uh, this controls these things uh, and the uh, communication signal processing is done by these things now uh, the advantages are the utility gets a better view of the customer's usage of electricity by the customer Customers can also get a better view of his usage through the customer portal and thereby control the usage of electricity. So this is a energy conservation mechanism. Uh, so there will be uh, adjusting energy use, more effective budgeting, uh, and uh, uh, we can switch to a new utility. So 
step down transformer under no load condition let us assume that v1 is voltage applied at the primary winding v2 is voltage developed at the secondary winding i1 current through the primary winding i2 current through the secondary winding n1 number of turns of primary winding n2 equal to number of turns of secondary winding then uh, this is our primary side and this is our secondary side it is found over an iron core with n2 less than n1 and this is our applied alternating current supply and this has uh, less turns than the primary winding since transformer is a constant power device v1 i1 equal to v2 i2 or uh, v2 by v1 equal to i1 by i2 equal to n2 by n1 equal to k uh, n2 by n1 is the turns ratio instrument now let us send a look at instrumental transformers instrument transformers instrument transformers are used in connection with the measurement of voltage current energy and power in ac circuit it is mainly to extend the range of the measuring instrument and to isolate the measuring instrument from high voltage line uh, the, uh, uh, in some cases we need to step down or step up uh, the voltage uh, to, for uh, for measuring for measurement purposes so we use instrument transformers and it can be effectively used to step down the voltage and current within range of the existing measuring instruments of moderate size that is we have to step down some large currents uh, to that value to be able to be measured and types of instrument transformers are current transformers or ct or voltage transformers or potential voltage or potential transformers or pt and primary winding connected to the power line and secondary windings to the measuring instrument so these are current transformers a current transformer is a device that is used for the transformation of current from a higher value into a proportionate current to a lower value and this is the symbol of current transformer so now we have this primary section primary section is connected to the high power line uh, there are few turns of primary and there are many turns in secondary and the secondary is connected to uh, a meter to be to measure the value of current through this line so uh, let us say uh, we have a one kilo ampere and we have to uh, and our ammeter is in the range 0 to 1 ampere so uh, we will connect this 1 kilo ampere at primary side having less turns and uh, ammeter at the secondary side so this is our transformer or we can uh, use this symbol uh, to, uh, to to symbolize current transformer now current transformer connections we have one loop connection two loop connection three loop connections uh, we have a uh, neutral phase uh, through the transformer and uh, uh, neutral as a turn now we will come to potential transformers an instrument transformer used for the transfer transformation of voltage from a higher value to lower value uh, pt step down the voltage to a safe limit value which can be easily measured by the ordinary low voltage instrument like a voltmeter watt meter and watt or meters so this is the symbol of potential transformers having a greater number of turns at the primary side and lower number of turns at the secondary sides now uh, here we can see this is the this is uh, our source and our source is connected to uh, larger number of this is the primary side connected to larger number of turns and our secondary side is connected to the uh, is connected to the voltmeter and our primary side is connected to the load which has higher value is like 4600 volts and we have to uh, step down the voltage to 115 volts to measure the value now uh, this is our 10 kilo volt uh, alternating current uh, so this is applied to the primary side having greater number of turns and we have on the other side we have to step down this 10 kilo volt to 0 to 10 volt uh, to be to uh, be able to the for the voltmeter to show the reading so we will connect this voltmeter at the secondary side having a lesser number of turns 
Now advantages of instrument transformers. The large voltage and current of AC power system can be measured by using small rating measuring instruments and by using the instrument transformers measuring instruments can be standardized. They provide electrical isolation between high, power, high voltage power circuits and measuring instruments and there is low power consumption in measuring circuits due to low voltage and current levels. Uh, then they can be effectively used to measure current without the need for breaking the main circuit for inserting the uh, current transformer primary winding and uh, instrument transformers can help in reducing overall costs since various instruments including metering, relay, diagnostic and indicating instruments can all be connected to the same instrument transformer. Now let us see what is the equivalent circuit of ideal transformer on no load. This is just a prerequisite knowledge. So we have EP and ES. EP is the voltage uh, EMF induced in primary winding and ES is the EMF induced in secondary winding and VP is our source voltage at primary side. IP is the current in primary winding and IM is the magnetizing component and NP is the number of turns of primary winding and NS is the number of turns of secondary winding. Now this is our phase diagram. So we take IP equal to IM and uh, uh, the flux is in phase with the uh, current in primary winding and uh, uh, EP is EPES that is EMF induced is lagging behind the flux and uh, VP is leading flux by 90 degree. Now uh, we will see the equivalent circuit of practical transformer on no load. So uh, we uh, saw that IP and uh, IM are in phase with the, uh, our flux. But what if uh, IO equal to IP is not in phase? Then we have this uh, IC here that is the coreless component and IO is the exciting current of this transformer or no load current which is the current used to excite the primary winding. And this will be our uh, equivalent circuit this IO. IO is the exciting current and we have a coreless component through RC a resistor and our magnetizing current through XM an inductor. This is our uh, equivalent circuit of practical transformer. Here you have EP and ES. Uh, they are uh, same. They lag behind the flux. Now this is our exact equivalent circuit of transformer. We have IP, the primary current, uh, which goes to uh, some resistance, uh, some RL from stoke. And then there is IO, that is the exciting current. Uh, and uh, it is dividing into IC and IM. Uh, and here it will be IP dash, not IP, because there is a loss of IO here. And this is our secondary side with our, uh, a choke on the secondary side. Now we can uh, see that VP equal to minus EP plus IP into RP plus JXP from the circuit. And uh, uh, ES equal to ES plus IS into RS plus JXS from the circuit. Now RP plus JXP is the leakage impedance of primary winding. And RS plus JXS is the leakage impedance of secondary winding. And this is our diagram. So we have flux here, IO the exciting current, and this is our IP. At first we saw IP was, or the current through primary winding, winding was in phase with flux, but here it is of larger value and IP is equal to IO plus IP dash, as we can see. And here we have uh, IS, the current through secondary winding, IS, VS and IS, RS all in the same phase. And we have VP or the voltage at the primary winding which is equal to minus EP plus IP RP plus IP XP from this phase diagram. Now we will come to errors in CT. Uh, so a practical CT with the nominal turns ratio NS by NP equal to K. Consider the transformer to be ideal IP equal to KIS. So a meter reading will be IS and uh, estimate of primary current line current equal to kis but actual primary current uh, is not equal to kis uh, ip is not equal to kis kis equal to ip dash 
and IP minus IP dash equal to I0 from this phasor diagram and from phasor IP not equal to IP dash or IP dash by IS equal to K uh, IP by IS is not equal to K but IP dash by IS uh, the magnitude of IP dash by IS is equal to the turns ratio and the angle between IP and IP dash gives the phase angle error so uh, this is our IP but uh, uh, as we saw there is some loss like IO uh, coreless component and uh, uh, exciting current which uh, results in IP dash through primary winding and uh, we know IP by IS equal to K uh, but uh, in reality uh, IP dash equal to K IS so that is the error and the error angle is the angle between IP and IP dash now errors in PT, practical PT with the nominal turns ratio is NP by NS equal to 1 by Q. So that is the practical PT, but uh, 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 if we consider the transformer to be ideal, then VP equal to VS by K, voltmeter reading equal to VS. Uh, because the voltmeter is connected at the secondary side. Now estimate of primary voltage is Vs by K. But actually source voltage Vp is not equal to Vs by K. Because there are some losses here. So we can see Vp not equal to Vs by K. Uh, Vs by K is equal to Ep. Um, here Ep is the voltage in EMF induced at the uh, primary current. Or Vs by K is not equal to VP rather it is the EMF induced that uh, primary side not the not our uh, source voltage so VP minus minus EP from this phasor diagram we can see that VP minus minus EP equal to IP into RP plus JXP that is the voltage drop in uh, primary winding here we can see IP into RP plus JXP is our uh, voltage drop and from phasor VP by Vs is not equal to 1 by K that is the ratio error and the angle between Vs and EP is not equal to 0 that is the phase error